How's it growing? We all know that bees are critical for our environment and for the health of our planet, for probably our existence. Today we are at Cynthia Schaefer's house again, and she's gonna introduce us to her bee mentor, and they're gonna show us how they extract honey from her beehives. This is a continuation of the new Cynthia series on Stacks Urban Harvest. This morning we're going to go into the beehive and I'm super excited because my friend and mentor Brian Schaefer is here with me. Brian has the same last name as me but unfortunately we are not related. He's been a beekeeper for eight years, he's been a commercial beekeeper for five years and he has taught me everything I know about bees. Brian. Good morning. So Brian, before we go into the hive, I wanted to explain to people some of the tools we were going to be using. This is a, a bee brush. It is usually made out of, the bristles are made out of horse hair. It's a firm fiber. We use it not to brush the bees, but to tickle the backs of the bees and it, it startles them and causes them to walk away from the area that you're working in. This one is a nice one. It has a uh, tapered end so you can use it to pry the frames. The frames are uh, glued down with their bee glue called propolis and uh, you need some kind of a prying tool to, to do it. This, this tool works as both. So we don't want to brush the bee because it's, it, it can hurt them. We just kind of tickle their backs and get them to move away. This is a frame stand or frame holder. It goes on the side of the hive box. Uh, when, you, when we're taking frames out of the hive, we put them in the frame stand outside of the hive. Uh, the bees can stay on it and they don't get disturbed. We don't want to set our frames on the ground because it picks up bugs and other parasites and things. So the frame stand allow, allows us to work in the hive by taking a few frames out uh, of the hive and setting them on the side. We can fit two, maybe three hives on this stand and that gives us plenty of room to work in the hive itself. And the most important, the hive tool. This is a multi-purpose tool. It is, again, used, uh, has tapered ends to scrape propolis, which is the bee glue, off of certain areas of the hive because that, that can uh, interfere with uh, putting the hive frames back in. The bees put propolis and seal up areas of the hive that can be penetrated from the outside. The inside of the hive is sterile so they'll seal up any holes or gaps on the outside of the hive or in the wood uh, so that the so that nothing can get into the hive and then they take everything that's bad in the hive doesn't belong there they take it out and they keep it inside of the, the hive sterile so it's the food there is edible for us and for them too this this hive has a tapered end for for scraping um, it's also used for prying when you're prying the the frames apart with uh, that are stuck together because of the propolis there is a hooked end that you can hook under the frames to help pry them up. It is a multi-purpose tool and, and invaluable when we're going into the hive. You must have this every time you go with you. This is a frame grip. So when you're gripping the hive, the, the frames, it's hard to get your fingers in to grab the ends. So this grips the hive from the center. It has very thin areas here so we don't squish bees. When you're grabbing with your fingers, they're, they're fatter than this. And um, you can squish bees, so in order to avoid that, we put this over the top of one of the frames, we squeeze it down and then we can lift and, and pry at the same time and lift the frame up and then put it on our frame rest or look at it um, after we get it out of the hive. Now why in the world, Brian, would we need a vacuum cleaner to work with bees? Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Bees, bees in the wild, when they get parasites that affect the hive, they leave the area they're in. Since we are beekeepers, we want to keep the bees there. We have to help them sometimes. There are uh, things that penetrate the hive or get into the hive that um, are not desirable and if they're left um, unattended to they will destroy the hive. So we use a bee vacuum or a small vacuum. This is a battery powered vacuum that gives us some um, um, the ability to go out to our hives into a field somewhere and if there's especially use it for hive beetles. Hive beetle is a little black bug that penetrates the hive that the bees will move the beetles away from the cells that they're laying eggs in put them to the outside cells or up to the top of the frames and makes us easy when we open up our frame to vacuum them up and get them out of the way. The bees can't sting them, they're too small and too hard shelled to be stung, so they just corner them and trap them and when we open up the hive we kind of let those beetles get away from them uh, and so we will vacuum them as we see them. 
There's also a beetle barn or a trap that we put in there that will uh, hopefully catch them. And the, uh, if we have a hive that has a lot of beetles, uh, we want to make sure that we get them out of there as soon as possible because they will chase the bees away. Uh, the beetles will lay eggs in the cells that the bees lay eggs in. And uh, when they hatch, it creates a lot of maggots and it chases, it, it fouls the honey and, um, and chases the bees away. As beekeepers, we want those bees to stay. So we help them get rid of those beetles um, when they're infested in, um, uh, with a high amount. A uh, small amount we don't worry about. They're in every hive, unfortunately, but they usually will take care of them themselves. If it gets beyond that, we use the bee vacuum to vacuum them up. We have a tapered end here that will suck up the beetles, but not a bee. And sometimes the bees will get attached to it, but we can gently pull them off. It doesn't have a high suction uh, to it that will hurt the bees and, uh, and allows us to get the beetles and get them into areas that we would have to destroy with our fingers, whereas with this we can just pull the beetles out. If they go into a cell, we can suck them right out with the, with the bee vacuum. Today we're going to go into my two hives. The first hive, you're going to notice it has a lot less bees, and the second hive has a ton of bees. The first hive was the original hive, and they split, and they swarmed, and they went, half of them just went away. And then they split again, so I called Brian, and we captured them, and we put them in the second box. Brian, if someone sees a swarm of bees in their yard, what should they do? Shouldn't approach them, not in Florida anyway. They should, they should stay, stay away from them and observe them for a couple of days to see if they stay. Typically when a swarm leaves the, the area that they're in, they're either splitting the hive that's there. So a queen, the original queen, will leave the hive uh, along with uh, half of the bees or a, part, a good portion of the bees and they will go to a, a rally point where they all gather together. The queen can't travel very far because she's pregnant and, um, and she's heavy so they, they starve her for a couple of days to slim her down, make it able for her to fly. So they'll only fly in short distances. So the initial swarm that you see typically came from an area that was close by. They will usually only stay there for one or two days and they will send out scouts to go out and look for uh, per more permanent places to stay. And when they find a place, they kind of vote on it. The bees will go out, the, the, the first bee that finds it will leave a scent there, uh, go back to the hive. Other bees will go out there and check. If they like it, they will leave a scent there. In the meantime, other bees are finding other locations. The one that gets the most votes wins and they go and stay to that permanent location. Before they send for the queen though, they will uh, start building honeycomb in, in the area so that when the queen comes, she can start laying eggs right away. If there's honeycomb for her to lay eggs, she'll lay up to a thousand eggs per day in the, in the springtime. So they need those eggs in order to get, uh, keep the hive going. So they know how important it is to get the queen laying right away. As soon as the queen lays, then the hive cycle begins again. So. And if you see a swarm in your yard and you need to have it removed, you wanna contact your local beekeeper association or a certified beekeeper and have them help you to remove that hive safely. So we're gonna go in the hives now. I do wanna note that I do not sell my honey. I use all the honey I produce for the medicines that I sell, but hopefully we're gonna be able to take a, maybe two or three frames today if we're lucky. And also, we don't take honey from the bees until we're sure that they have plenty for them. Here in South Florida, we're very fortunate because there is food year round and we don't have to worry about that as much, but we do always put the bees first. Let's go into the hives. Okay, let's go. Smoke is used to block pheromones and chemicals released by certain bees to warn the colony of danger while the colony's defense response is interrupted. This method using smoke makes it much easier to work. Who better than a firefighter to teach you how to make a fire? This is our smoker and Brian's going to tell you how he starts it. A smoker is another essential tool that we use for the beehives. Uh, we start off with just uh, dried pine needles is the best fuel that to use for it. You can buy fuels but you can use dried leaves and things too but we find that the best is, is uh, pine needles because it's aerated enough to get a lot of smoke going. We don't want heat to hit the, the bees, we want smoke to hit the bees. So the smoke calms them down and, just, and detract, uh, distracts them from, um, from uh, the, the defensive mechanisms, calms it down, keeps them from attacking us, 
and uh, focus, lets them focus on themselves and on the hive. So what we do is we put a little bit of pine needles in there, start it, get it burning really good, get a lot of flame, but we don't want that flame to, to stay. We only want it to smolder so that we get a lot of smoke. So right now, as, as, the, as the flames build up in our first uh, batch we put in there, then we'll put in a second batch, smother the flames, and keep the, the uh, smoldering pine needles burning as we pack them down, we keep puffing and we get a lot of thick white smoke but it's not, it's not hot to touch because the heat is away down at the bottom. So we will, with our hot, using our hive tool, we'll pack it down a little bit just to get it, get it going. We try not to breathe it but unfortunately we do sometimes but we don't want to breathe that smoke if we can help it. And then we keep it burning and put on our our lid so we can direct it towards the, the direction of the bees. A couple of puffs in the front just to let them know we're here and to back them off the, their defensive stance and again inside the hive. A couple of puffs. That was the outer cover we took off. Now we're getting ready to pry off the inner cover. We pry it because it's sealed down with the propolis that the bees make which they call bee, bee glue. You can see how tough it is to get in. And you see we have black beetles here. These are the beetles that Cynthia was talking about. And it's the ones that they corner to, to keep them away from their hive. Our job is to kill them or get rid of them. And we're going to do that now that we see that we need them uh, by using something called a beetle barn. It is a little maze-like structure that has holes in the side. And we close it up. The beetles go in these, these holes. Instead of the bees, instead of trapping the beetles outside the hive, they trap them in here and then the beetles die and it's able to, to help the hive survive. So we have a couple of these to put in today. We knew we had beetles when we were coming into it today, so um, more than usual. And um, we're going to try to make sure we keep them at bay so that the bees don't don't uh, leave the hive. That end. Okay. So we'll start, start removing? Yeah, let's look for a, a frame or two of honey. Okay. So we're gonna pull off, we start at the end. We don't wanna, we wanna make sure that Right now we're in the honey super. Each, each box for the hive is called a super. There is a, a deep super that is used for the brood chamber. That's where, the, that's where the queen lays her eggs. We have a queen excluder in here that keeps the queen from coming up into our, our medium super, which is our honey super. This is all honey, it's pure. There's no eggs laid in this area, so uh, the, the wax is cleaner, the, the food is cleaner, and it's uh, suitable for human consumption. We use our, our prying up tool because, again, they glue it down. We separate the frames from each other a little bit just to get some of that stickiness off. And then we reach in very carefully and pry the frame up. That one's empty. So this, empty. Is a, this is a frame that they're just building on now. They're starting to build. So they're, they're building wax comb. This is a, a what they call a, a, a plastic foundation and it has a starter on the size of the cells we want the bees to build at. The bees have a, uh, a, the, the choice to make worker bees, which are females, or male bees, which are, which, um, are bigger in size. And we don't want as many male bees because they don't help the hive. We want the worker bees. So I wear a bee suit, not just for my protection, but for the protection of the bees. We try to be calm and careful and move slowly when we're in the hive, but sometimes things happen. You drop a tool or you bump the hive, and I don't want them to lose their lives trying to sting me if I make an error. So I wear the bee suit for me and for them, and I think it's a, a better outcome for all of us. This frame is built out three quarters of the way uh, with, with honeycomb, and you can see inside the yellow, golden yellow uh, liquid that's inside the cells, that's honey. There's, there's, no, there's no eggs on this side. Honey is, uh, has a high moisture content and the bees, when they originally get the nectar and put it into the cells, it has the, the, they wait for the moisture to leave by, by um, uh, the humidity to, to be taken out. Uh, so th to make it a thicker substance, it becomes honey. When that happens, they will begin to cap the cells. This is the start of one here that they're starting to cap it, which means this honey is starting to get, be ready to eat. We don't eat the honey unless it's been capped. So a capped section of honey will look more like this. So now you have half the hive, half of the frame is capped with, uh, 
of the honey and some of it's still open nectar that they're waiting for the moisture content to, to drain down before they cap it off. And then it's ready to eat. They store it that way. When we take the frames out, we're very careful to make sure we use the same orientation. So when I take it out, I hand it to her so that we put it back the same way we have it because they work back to back on the frames and um, we want them to continue the, the, the smoothness that they were working at before and to pick off in the same areas. So some of these are really welded down with their, their propolis. That's why this tool comes in handy. It's a must have tool to have and we pull it out. And this again is about over halfway filled with, with honey. We usually take it when it's 80%, it's so getting close to it. This one's more like 75% of capped honey. That is our queen. Oh. There she goes. See how her, she's longer in the back? She's moving, she's like booking. Nice. We'll be very careful. Yeah, that's, that was a good find. You could be able to see that. Yeah. There's eggs that lay down here. Look like little tiny grains of rice inside the cells. I'm not sure if you can see them. The eggs hatch after three days, and then you get larvae, which looks a little worm-like C-shaped worm in the bottom of these here. That worm will grow for about six more days, and then they will cap the they will cap the those cells like this. This is called capped brood. And these cells in here are ones that have hatched. The bees go in and clean them out. The queen comes back and lays new eggs in it and starts all over again. This is the full cycle of bees here. It's been really humid lately, so they're not capping the honey really quickly. So we're gonna take just this one frame. We're only gonna take this side. This side is not ready. and separate the wax from the honey. But for now, it's magically delicious. If we're up north, we wouldn't do this. We would just scrape open the, the we would scrape open the cover and let the honey drain out and leave more of the wax for them. But now here, building wax, we have a full 12 month season, so we're, we don't have to do that. So. I'll cover this back up. And in this hive, when they got weak after they split, there was a lot of honey in the honey super. So we left the honey super full so that they could get plenty of food even though they didn't have enough foragers. And I think that's what kept this hive alive while it struggled. So this hive is doing great. We just need to give it more time to fill up. So we're gonna button up and be done for the day. This is the queen excluder. So the worker bees can fit through here, but the queen cannot. Oh, it keeps her in the lower section where she's only laying, having babies. And they put the honey then in the top section. If you enjoyed this episode, if you got something out of it, please do me a huge favor. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, click on that bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos in the future, and let's grow together.